Hello and welcome to our program. Let's start with the thought of the day. Never lose an opportunity of seeing anything beautiful, for beauty is God's handwriting. Well, talking of handwriting, we are very delighted to have in the studio with us handwriting expert Shruti Singh. Shruti, Karikram mein aapka swagat hai. Thank you, Varan. It's my pleasure to be here. Wonderful to have you. Shruti, kehte hain ki aankhe dil ki zubaan hoti hai. So, handwriting is a very beautiful way It's a very beautiful way to know a person because the easy and quickest way to understand what is going on in your mind. What could be my success factors? Mm -hmm. what, what is that, you know, how, how is my temperament looking like? What is my relationship compatibility? Kya ho sakti hai? What is my aptitude? Especially, you know, when you make career choices, it is a brilliant tool to, you know, kind of access people. So, it's something like an astrological chart, is it? that you can match two people's writings and say these are two people suited for each other? <laughs> Does that happen? Uh, so astrology basically by the terms and definitions of how we define it is an occult science, right? But handwriting analysis or as uh, also known as graphology is part of advanced psychology. Okay. So difference lies, I believe both are science. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that, you know, what we defi define science here is in, in today's time is basically something which is measurable. Okay. And something which is not measurable or is paranormal by nature is known as occult. Okay. So it is different, yes. Or agar astrology may itni wo hoti to, you know, we wouldn't have said that people would get separated and whatsoever. However, in handwriting analysis, I've seen the accuracy level. The way we say that, you know, this is the way the, com the companionship will work much better accuracy is fairly high All right. so which is where you know I think it's it has got an edge over uh, right. astrology okay so handwritings change if I go back to class two I had a different writing class six different college different and now my writing is different and my personality also changes along with that Oh, of course, yes. So you've matured over a period of time. And what happens is, say, for example, all your experience, uh, to who you are today, Gordon, basically is culmination of experiences that you've been through. It is very, very different than what I have been through in my life. So okay. it will change. What you have seen as a 13-year-old girl, vis-a-vis -vis what you've seen as 30-year-old woman, will bring you know changes to your experience, and which is what gets reflected in your handwriting. Right. So in a way, we gauge a people's life journey through handwriting. Okay. So is it also then possible, uh, Shruti, that if my writing to a great extent can tell you my personality, can I alter my personality by altering my writing? Absolutely, yes. And this is what is handwriting coaching or handwriting therapy called as okay. is used for. It is based on principles of reverse psychology. You know, very basic example I'll give you. If to a child, you ask not to touch a candle, mm -hmm. what will it do? He will make all conscious effort to experience that. Right. So similarly, when something is not right with you or something which is not happening right and we believe there has to be a change that has to happen, we now consciously tell you to do it till it gets programmed to your subconscious mind, so which is you know the principle of reverse psychology state. And it is doable. It takes time, but. Okay. So that means uh, there are writing exercises that if you carry on and uh, based on different letters of the alphabet, the A, the E, the I, yes. uh, you can actually change your temperament and move towards greater enhancement of personality. Absolutely. Could you share some examples with us? I will share my own life journey, you know, as in how I believe in it and why do I propose so much of, you know, the therapy part of it. And uh, my client testimonial any which ways, you know, has been there, which gives me the confidence to talk about it. I was 16 and 17 when my father got transferred from a small place called Dhanbad, which is now in Jharkhand, to Lucknow. And I was left alone in Dhanbad to complete my 10th. You know, in that phase, you don't change schools and all of that. Right. And uh, I got this book by mistake uh, in his garage. And I got hooked to the book. And I realized that I am having depression and anxiety as an age of 15, 16, which is very unusual as a child to undergo. So you analyze your own writing? Yes. Okay. And then how do I overcome it? You know, your parents are not there with you because they've got transferred and I was not able to communicate that to my uncle and aunt with whom I was living okay. with and, uh, and then all of a sudden I was also separated from my siblings and I think that was a major shock to me not living with my brother and my sister. I never realized I'm so emotionally attached to them and uh, while I did that and my 
academics was suffering i was suffering or i was rather you know having that anxiety and depression because I, my mathematical skills were way too challenged mm-hmm. i was flunging mm-hmm. i mean i was shit scared to think of kya karna hai kaise karna hai and then when i read and i analyzed and i knew that there are challenges with me how do i overcome it to one immediate solution that you know came to my mind is if handwriting can tell this which means people who are good with mathematical skills have got different handwriting now let me copy that so what i started doing in my class was that i would steal people my batchmates handwriting hmm. and people who have good good scores in mathematics i started copying their handwriting and i did that okay and uh, honestly speaking i w- then went to my class teacher and i asked that i want to sit next to this girl who's good in mathematics yes okay so i managed to pass she's done a phd in mathematics okay <laughs> so that did so you did improve your skills like that absolutely okay. and time and again i go back to my tool and i use it like uh, very recently two years back i was down i was hospitalized again with depression and anxiety and whatsoever to overcome all that fear that i had within okay. me because of the life series i was able to recover myself right so let's talk about some common things you know that all of us uh, invariably uh, suffer from and one of them is anger yes uh, you know road rage is an issue we get angry in small little things does our handwriting also indicate impatience and anger and can we control it yes it does but what is very important to understand is we need to as an analyst we need to undefi- identify those reasons behind anger okay temper aggression these are you know traits which leads to anger okay you know? anger aggression is of two type active aggression and passive aggression i may not express it but i may still be angry a lot of people who there are sudden outburst of temper or aggression you know all of a sudden you see anybody going very very violent right. who are normally very you know peaceful cool, yes. calm right. composed these are passive aggressive people so we do see that in handwriting there are various reasons and in everybody what my experience says is that you know there are different set of triggers for them largely somebody who is not keeping well is the influence of medicines that do it your body is demanding far much more from you and if you get to a hectic lifestyle aggression increases because then your body is resisting that change okay our body is very intelligent to demand what it wants so in that way it is seen when a woman is pregnant the aggression level goes high because she wants to be protective towards the womb that she is carrying within herself okay so there is that reason in children it's largely because they are trying to either adjust to a hostile circumstance or they are not getting mechanisms to express themselves so that also needs to be addressed oh, you know absolutely. you can't just do it with writing and that's what you're saying okay would you like to share some examples of uh, you know people you worked with or just handwritings maybe not people but handwritings you worked with and what have been the changes so i i deal with client on a daily basis but something very interesting you know as in uh, came up last week there's this one old good old friend of mine now most of my client they kind of keep consulting me over the years so i have clients who've been in touch with me from past 8 years you know, okay. and every time they feel stuck either in their career or personal life i would go back and tell them okay you know this is what your analysis is saying do this do that so one of my client uh, she's got a daughter and suddenly the daughter has become very aggressive and she shared shared her handwriting with me and she said i am not able to manage her rather than doing her analysis i said send your and your husband's handwriting she did share both of it and uh, i told her you both need to stop fighting for her aggression to go down okay so that's where it was coming from child was unhappy seeing parents fighting this was one beautiful thing that happened the other thing that i remember uh, you know someone was heartbroken and was on the verge of giving up and you know i don't want to look for any relationship everything is going bad and uh, extremely hateful towards her own self she called me up she cried i allowed her to cry and then i said okay fine do whatever you feel like it's your life it's your journey just do one thing before you decide anything just because that you believe me and just because we've been good friends and we've shared good coffee together write 10 pages of i love you your name and send it to me beautiful She did that okay that means every time you write and your fingers take on that message it's a reaffirmation of itself so Absolutely. you're actually counseling yourself Absolutely. and you're loving yourself those Absolutely. many times 
Right. So, you know, at the end of the day, she sent me 10 pages and she did that. I mean, I, you know, I feel lucky when, you know, but your that's client trust, listens actually. to you. Right. And then she's writing, I hate you. I said, I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so yeah. sweet. Okay. So when we come to seeing, uh, you know, handwritings and there are signatures and people say that if you write above the line, you're angled upward, you can see ambition, uh, you can see uh, how strong you are, how assertive you are. And how are those things relevant? I mean, I would like to know. So you would tell me 10 things about me. But how does that value add to my life? It just tells me about myself. So the value addition is today, you know, why we are so much lost into a world where we are leading leading us nowhere we're working but we're not earning a life we're working we we have started segregating our earning life vis-a-vis -vis an enjoyment life it's because we've lost that connect to our own self okay if you look at handwriting as a process Goran, what it says is very clearly that the signals ge gets generated over here which is your brain your brain assimilates experience memory information and then sends signal to your hand a lot of exercise happens this hand-mind coordination is very good for mental as well as physical health. Okay. So having said that, you know, when you function and when you write, it keeps your brain, emotions and your muscles, hand muscles active or any other, you know, tool that you use for writing. A lot of people write with their mouth or their, you know, leg or some people write with both of their hands. It yeah. keeps that part active and it is very, very important. Somewhere the inner connect is also happening because when you write something original, like writing a story or a poem, you're thinking from your subconscious mind. You are churning different level of experiences. So that makes it far much more, you know, I, I believe that this is one of the best tool you can have to have an inner connect to yourself. Now, when you do that, it becomes imperative that one, one has to keep practicing it. Right. The second thing, you know, adding value. One that when you are connected to yourself, your course of action that you will take in your life will be far much more channelized. And which is where the disconnect happen more than often you see, you know, I might be an engineer working in arts. Such okay. kind of deviations might not happen. Me understanding what do I want in my life can probably be seen in handwriting. When you're managing a family, you know, you have children who would not know how to express. They don't know what life cycle they're going through. They're young to understand that. Then you become a, you know, parental guiding force for them. In terms of compatibility, I have seen it working immensely well. Okay. In terms of professional, you know, when I have my professional clients where we do talent acquisition and senior level hiring and all of that, we see the cultural and the value system has to match. Right, right. There it, it is of immense value to understand. The benefit that you get out of this is that you know your strength points, you know your delta points. If something is stopping you from success, you can improve that at any given point of time. Then my dependency on any external signs or external forces in terms of you know, a tarot reading or wearing a gem or a stone becomes minimum. I become in control of my own life. Okay. I drive my destiny. Right. So you move away from fear and move towards faith. And Absolutely. Faith in yourself. And that's a very, very huge movement. So when we see uh, parents today, you know, parents are struggling what occupation, what profession the child should go into. Children are struggling because at the age of 14, we tell children, decide your stream. Science lena hai, ke arts lena hai, ke uh, kisi aur cheez mein jana hai. How do you, what is the right age that parents should get their children's writing analyzed? When is it formed? Because it's a very tender stage and writing anyway evolves with the personality. Yes. So how does that happen? One thing, yes. So as a handwriting analyst, any time I have been given a sample which is of age bracket, I ask for children especially because zero to seven years by the principle and uh, laws of psychology is a formative year. So what does a child learn is all through his immediate womb surrounding. Right. You now what he's heard the voice in and around him when he was as a, inside the womb is only from where his learning would happen. Seven till 14 is the age when he learns from environment. Okay. And from 14 till 21, he culminates 14 years of experience, analyzes it, and then forms his personality. So if I have to take a decisive call as in what one would be good at, 7 to 14 is when aptitude gets formed for a child. Okay. So that's the time when parents should be very analytical and understanding towards a child, understanding what are the likes and the dislikes. Now this is the age typically, you know, if you have a daughter and you say, oh, you have to go and learn karate and not kathak, she'll say, no, I want to go for kathak. It's because, you know, her aptitude towards art and science is, or dance form is increasing. The way she wants to express herself is not aggression, but movement. Okay. 
so that's where it comes important taking up a decision i think should be around 14 to 18 okay but depending on the maturity of the child if they're not feeling or they don't get their calling parents should not force them rather just see what they're naturally good at now what happens the success factor of something that you're naturally good at is very very high because you're naturally good at then you, it's not an adaptive trait for you like i started my career as a software engineer okay and today i'm a hardcore handwriting analyst okay i'm a computer grad by qualification right so when you analyze yourself and you decided that this is it, you realize you needed to go into more of a, because both are sciences, you see, this is Absolutely. a science and so is computer science. So within a science, it's such a huge difference. So I think, uh, and also when you see your internal aptitude, what makes you have the courage to say that I want to develop this further and can I use my handwriting to make some of my dreams come true? Absolutely. A lot of insight comes in, like I'll tell you, uh, there are very f the few entrepreneurs who so I, I was also into learning and development and I used to go for corporate trainings and okay. all of that I would get to interact with people often people would come back to me and there were like two three instances where I remember very clearly he was a complete misfit for a job and he came back and said ma'am I just want to have my lunch with you and I said okay because you know you tell that you you're a handwriting analyst as part of the workshop and he said just not happening I feel like you know running away from parents and mm -hmm. everything and I looked at his handwriting and I said you can't take commands you have huge appetite to acquire things that is not possible with a career bracket something explore he left his job in the next six months is a serial entrepreneur running three businesses business houses pretty successfully less than 30 year of age and happy and extremely happy so we're going to go in for a short break, uh, Shruti. When we come back, we'd like to see from you some samples and how do you see the differences in writings so that Absolutely. our viewers can also, you know, we can become quack handwriting analysts, <laughs> maybe not professionals. <laughs> sure. But it's always fun, you know, it's always fun to see and uh, say, oh, is this true for me? This is how I read my writing. This is what it could be. Let's take a short musical break. So from music for the ears, we move on to music for the hands, which is our handwriting. Shruti, can you share some examples so that we can somewhere try and understand who we are through what we write? While you write, there are different things that come into picture. Okay. How much space you're taking in pa on a paper? What is how much space your each word is taking on the paper? What is the page utilization that you're doing? Okay. We observe all of these. Apart from that, there are like how much pressure are you putting while holding the 
pen so you watch people right sometimes it does help okay. you know in certain cases yes we do want to see that otherwise if samples are coming to us we normally see what is the you know pressure with which they have pressed the pen on the paper then we have certain things also to understand in what circumstances these handwriting were written if clarity does not come in okay then it is like is it like straight or is it tilted towards right or is it tilted towards left so these are various things that we observe you know how the pattern is coming out is what will help me understand about you okay like if you will see in the sample you see the word call again again is occupying lot of space then there is a word call no which has got a medium breath and then there is word call can can is one which is more you know occupying lesser space compressed yes it's pretty much compressed so what does it talk about people so again is like you know mm, someone who'll take lot of space to express themselves mm -hmm. they need their comfort to function someone who's written no is okay with the world of reality i can adjust i can do it and one with compressed are more demanding people okay, okay. yes compressed handwriting is also sign of intelligence for so, some reason so they have high level of expectations from others and themselves themselves more rather than others so demanding bosses huh another intelligent people who are pretty self focused and would love to do things in their own terms and conditions okay. they look for depth in anything that they do right and what is space between two words indicate if you leave a lot of space so one is the word space then is between the space it's my interaction with the other people if the space is more i would take more time to associate with anyone my okay. relationship will take time to build up i may be a little more you know cold initially and then might communicate i would not be the first person to communicate then may i cannot handle large number of people now when it comes to space between the lines like i have written one line and i'm writing the next the gap between that is how am i interacting with my immediate environment okay if it's less i may be bogged down with a lot of work pressure i may not be able to figure out my priorities if it's more i know how much time i need from moving from one but if it's exceptionally high like you know one line being written i in one of the samples uh, here you see is he's taken th he's written four lines in the entire page okay that's a lot of space in between absolutely okay and that's the way he is i know my work i will do the way i want i will decide how i want to succeed in my life and that's actually a sample of a very successful entrepreneur so that means the page is like this is my space and this is my world i will occupy it i know at my pace and my space absolutely okay yes okay. see and the other thing then you know that comes in is that is my hand handwriting vertical tilted towards left tilted towards right now say saying that it actually helps you to understand my emotional orientation okay the page flows or the writing that we follow either it's hindi or english is from left to right right so left is me right is you so Moving if if my uh, uh, writing is tilted towards the left i'm more self focused me centered okay yes self focused okay. i would not say me centered but it's more self so i before i initiate any activity or do anything it will be more like what is in it for me okay these people are very good like you know the basic word like normally we end up talking about these people are introverted however the definition of introvert is what is in it for me they are social they are communicative may not be highly communicative but before even they interact they would want to know what is my, my comfort zone there mera kya hai okay mere liye usme kya hai kya hai yes right okay wo charity bhi karenge to wo isliye nahi karenge ki you know unko karna hai wo isliye karenge kyunki wo jante honge ya wo unko pata hoga ki main isliye kar raha hu kyunki mujhe acha lagta hai i associate myself with this cause okay ye statement unse zyada aayega rather than jo log har you know cause ke liye paise de dete hain right aur agar right ko tilt hai so oh, i am more think? emotionally expressive i want people in my life i need relationship i am more extroverted if i can say that okay vertical is when your head rules your heart bilkul straight to writing yaar ha bilkul okay. straight to writing hoti hai vertical is logic driven people strict to the protocol so if it's extremely right then you become extremely volatile or hypersensitive okay and ex so excessive of anything is you know not right right so that's how we kind of calculate and take care of okay hum mein se kuch log shruti na line pe nahi likhte line ke upar likhte hain wo kuch indicate karta hai 
हाँ बिल्कुल सो जो लाइन के ऊपर लिखते अगर लाइन डिफाइंड है उसके ऊपर आप लिख रहे हैं यू डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू गो बाय द नॉर्म्स ओके यू डिफाइन योर ओन नॉर्म्स समवेयर इट ऑल्सो इंडिकेट दैट यू नॉट कनेक्ट टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ रियालिटीज बिकॉज इफ दैट्स द प्रोटोकॉल वाई आई यू नॉट जस्ट एडियरिंग टू इट इट्स डिनाइंग ऑफ रियालिटी समटाइम्स इट ऑल्सो इंडिकेट्स दैट डिपेंडिंग ऑन द डिग्री यू नो डिग्री ओके राइट कभी कभी हम लिखते लिखते हमारी पूरी लिपि द लाइन गोज अपवर्ड्स यू नो वन यू राइटिंग विदाउट रूल्स लाइन नहीं है पेज पे तो अब लिख रहे हो तो पूरी सेंटेंस ऊपर की तरफ जाता है डज दैट इंडिकेट समथिंग ओ एब्सोल्युटली इट मींस दैट यू आर पॉजिटिव एंड एन ऑप्टिमिस्ट पर्सन ओके यस एनीथिंग व्हिच गोज डाउन इज साइन ऑफ गिविंग अप इज अ साइन ऑफ डिप्रेशन सो यू नो व्हेनेवर वी सी दैट काइंड ऑफ फॉर्म इन एनी ऑफ दी हैंड राइटिंग वी काइंड ऑफ यू नो रेज अलार्म और टॉक टू देम फार मच मोर you know closely to okay. understand what are the challenges which are there because going down is when you're losing hope and understand that faith and hope are the only two component that keeps us going towards future you know coming back to writing one thing which all of us very easily share with other people are our signatures yes what do signatures tell us so your signature basically is uh, your projection to the outer world understand gorang not everybody will be very communicative or will be open towards sharing personal life we all have you know our own set of experiences which may be open and we may not be open to talk about so our signatures can be same as what we write can be smaller than what we write can be bigger than what we write okay if you typically see the bollywood or if you see here in the samples that i have been reflecting in the center we have vijay amrit raj and then on the extreme left we have ratan ji tata and on the extreme right we have uh, well it's pretty destructive scene is uh, osama bin laden's signature if you look at the size sheer size you will know how much you know media image or public image they would want to have what they probably had okay if it's bigger than your normal handwriting it indicates that you want to be more socially visible so you're projecting yourself it's like yes. a projector okay so typically that kind of trait you will see in hollywood and bollywood actors because they love people they love to re- reflect larger than life image of themselves vis a vis ratanji tata who keeps a low profile knows his set of action and would do it okay and if you look at osama bin laden's signature it's confused between english and his native language and is complicated we all know what he did to the world okay right so, and what about you know so some of us write a signature then we put a line and then we put two three dots also yes. what does that indicate so th- when you put a line below your name your self assurance okay. you reflect that i know what i am doing or i know my line of authority the length of it or the pressure with which you put it or the direction in which you put it actually tells a lot about it. if it's moving from me to you zone which is okay. from left to right it means that you're positive you're assertive and you will take those actions it should be very close to the writing if the distance is high it means something different but if it's going from left right to left which is you know from me so from, from you, you to, to me, me okay it is not considered to be very very positive okay because then you're moving back into your past so you're creating a public image and then you're destroying it okay yes okay. So right. we kind of analyze all of it. When you put dot, where you put dot, if it's right after your name, you want the last word. This is it. This is me. I'll do it. Okay. If you put it below that, uh-huh. a cautious move maker. I will think before I put myself into action. Okay. Right. A lot of people make you know figures and they they you know they do decorations in and around their signatures. Right. And uh, so we look for symbols very actively in signature because that's a deeper inner desire. a lot of people like for i dot they put a circle or yes. they put a heart yes yes like when i was young when i was a college girl my name shruti i used to be a heart okay now it's just a dot <laughs> okay and some people a lot of people put circles so does that rip- also people say maybe it's a sign of a big ego it is not ego it is about how i want to see things for me okay. it, it largely says that i want to do things differently i want to stand out so with my goals creative that's beautiful okay right. and heart and all obviously symbolically represents how romantic you are okay if there are a lot of people put star which means they have a desire to shine right if they put a cross it is negative okay yes then right. you need to actually sit and talk to the person and ask they probably might have fear for death okay Right. that's the interpretation yeah what about the margins we leave some of us occupy only the center portion some people swing to the left and keep the right side blank yes so 
normally the pattern is that we write from left to right yes. so margin on a left is considered to be mandatory mm -hmm. on a right because how we end the word typically determines it's largely variable left of your writing is mother past the feminine things that you have in the energies that you have right is more future father okay. so what happens is if you're left margin is lesser you're more attached to your mom okay you're still struggling with you know overcoming your past if it's very very uniform it means that probably uh, you know you're more methodological and maybe or you know you would love to organize things if it's like you know making a convex you're trying to control your expenditure you start right you overspend and then you come back to reality if it's convex you started with expending too much and then you coming back okay. controlling it and then again you may spend up more that's how the interpretation goes right is largely variable mm -hmm. so we all are adaptable <laughs> okay somebody if he writes very very strictly within the specified space see page already has boundaries mm -hmm. and on top of it if you're putting up a boundary check for the artistic aptitude and desire for being perfect oh, okay. that's the first thing that we check the pressure then determines is it leading to migraine or it will just be a desire to do it okay. you know excessive of anything is bad and in fact uh, if we look at today's uh, world anybody who is very very perfectionist demands you know illogical things they they become isolated from lot of things and they cause problems and they tough on themselves also they are very tough on themselves uh, one has to have that flexibility to commit mistakes right leading to and if you mm -hmm. do not and often it is seen that people with desire to perfectionism have got migraine as an issue right are other health issues also reflected in writing are uh, honestly speaking vitality related things yes can be seen very easily okay um there is a huge amount of research that has gone into the science talking about the health clues through handwriting however it is not a diagnostic tool okay so anybody who does that and like i for sure in india do not promote medical graphology reason being is i do not see many doctors practicing it so if we go by the history and the research and the science of graphology it was doctors who were using it when they used it for medical reasons to identify and the huge amount of research that has gone is it's pretty valid and accurate but when you do not have a medical background and you try and understand it the large there's a huge 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 amount of you know probability that you will go wrong okay because what is getting reflected outer mm -hmm. outwards is assimilation of lot of things which is not going right inward right and you have to be hugely connected so i do not promote medical graphology as of now in india okay because the education level or the standard level that we are practicing right now is not mature and is not research based okay right so also you know there is a little gray area here shruti because uh, you're telling some people about uh, who they are you know i can agree or disagree but finally it's a outside validation or a message coming to me and it is a science we also know that uh, science can be right but there are areas where it can be wrong also so what are some concerns that you have about interpretation of handwriting the first concern is that you should know what your science can do and cannot do like age gender race nationality can never be known through handwriting okay so i can never be claiming towards that if i'm doing it i'm making an incorrect interpretation on the foundation so science तो बाहर ही चला गया उसमें से देन यू जस्ट यू नो वो जजमेंट आ जाती है वो जजमेंट आ जाती है वी ओनली चेक द मैस्कुलिनिटी और द फेमिनिन टेंडेंसीज इन एन इंडिविजुअल सो यू हैव टू वन व्हिच इज व्हाट यू कॉल वाइटैलिटी एब्सोल्युटली ओके द अदर एस्पेक्ट व्हेन इट कम्स टू द लिमिटेशन वन शुड नेवर क्लेम दैट दिस इज एन एब्सोल्युट टूल हैंड राइटिंग एनालिसिस इज नॉट एन एब्सोल्युट टूल लाइक एनी अदर असेसमेंट टूल so we have various psychometric assessment tool psychology based tools which helps you to understand personality this is just one of it and the for best of the results to understand what exactly do i really comprise of one should always use it in conjunction with other tools okay yes you know and and it is same for you know when somebody tries and tells about health and everything it should be there with the medical report it is not a diagnostic tool per se per se like you know when we do talent acquisition and when I, when we you know i do reports related to job fitment is where we 
clearly then tell that this is the intensity of a trait in a person it is existence okay if it's high you know that the execution you know the assimilation of that trait in the execution of any activity will be high agar wo kam hai to matlab wo trait utna visible nahi rahega but if that trait is more required mm -hmm. like say for example sales communication and understanding of other people is very very important and if that the intensity is low of an individual i would not recommend because then he will not initiate the conversation and you cannot expect customer to be initiating all the time right right so us tarike so the matching happens better like that yeah so then the analysis should not be generic in terms of absoluteness there are certain advantages the depth of few things like integrity the depth of my involvement how much will i drive my things towards action all these things are not known through any other psychometric assessment as much as it is known through handwriting okay. it is where so like i may have beautiful ideas i am an ideating person but i cannot execute them so my assessment the other tools what i have seen is like you know graphology or handwriting analysis reports tally with mbti big time all right okay thomas profiling i can very easily tell you if, even without looking at the profile that this is what will come in the profile okay. that's the experience that i have like i have taken certification in some five six tools and 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 which is where i see you know the correlation now when you do that you know that the tools are talking about passionate but if passion is only through ideas or through action is what we actually see through handwriting okay so when so it's like one one layer deeper okay. one layer deeper and it it, it, it so action orientation is not straight which typically will come through any of the assessments where i see graphology giving huge advantage right what is it about your profession that you really love uh honestly speaking i have evolved as a person the first thing when you know you start exploring a science like this you become extremely judgmental or you start putting people into bucket 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 mm -hmm. to stop that to be non judgmental to be receptive most of the time to create that connect it was a huge learning experience That's beautiful okay absolutely and then gradually when you look towards you know transforming and extending support at that level where you know engagement level with your client is for 3 months 6 months now it's like years after year you know somebody so you form a relationship you know yeah, trusting it has been a very very enriching experience for me as an individual the other thing when i started doing my library when i started my library i started with 14 books today i have largest collection of books of 300 books in india okay networking at global level setting up a vision for me you know they are very professional in their approach when i started for con you know asking for contribution and knowing what is that can come to india um the experience that came out enhanced me pushed me to define my limits taught me to be integral with my practice like you know third person's analysis is unethical today you get me an handwriting sample of maybe your producer and say please tell me how my relationship will be with him i may not be able to tell you until unless i have their permission so you know so when we do a contract with an organization we tell them that this part of the report please send it back to the client or you know the that's confidential yes okay no that is something that he should also know so okay. while i'm taking so if, say for example i'm high you know looking towards hiring you i take your sample i should tell you that this will go for an assessment okay that's it they go absolutely that's it. right and then when i send back the report what is his personality or what is your personality a report should go to you as well however the job fitment whether you're fit for the role that i am looking forward for you in is confidential should go to the organization, organization. now that's ethical practice <laughs> a lot of you know women or for infidelity a lot of people come to me okay as in can you please tell ethics you know it stops me i say inform the person or at least let the person know that you have the sample right right and so the result may not be uh, what you want to share with them but they should know that they are under assessment and i think that's very important it, it, you know it should be with consent yes you, otherwise yes so like i have celebrity clients but i don't reflect and i don't talk about them their handwriting samples would never go on my social media places right. because that's wonderful Wonderful. I have to respect their space. Okay, right. So Shruti, we really don't have to read your handwriting to get to know more about you. Thank you. We really learned so much not only about this uh, science, this form, but also about what it means for a person to have a tool at his or her disposal and what should be the ground rules for using that. But thank you so much. Wish you all the best in everything that you do. Thank you for coming on to our show. Thank you Dudarshan and thank you Goran for lovely interacting with you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you.
So after this uh, wonderful conversation uh, with Shruti, I think let the writing of this program slant a little towards the right. Let's move a little back down memory lane into history. Many of us living very sedentary lives, I think one of the biggest casualties of modern day living is physical fitness. So let's get charged, let's get active, let's get aerobic. To begin with the workout, stand with your feet wide apart, hold your arms in front of your chest. We'll start with a simple squat, but do the squat as much as you're comfortable with. So we'll first show you beginner's level and we'll move on to the advanced level. So are you ready? Let's go. One, two, get ready. Let's go now. Down and up. That's two. And up. That's three. And up. Four. Now we'll go a little deeper. A deeper squat. And up. Two, and up, three, and up, four, and up. This basic position is called the Ginza. Now to start with the first exercise in this section after you improvise on this particular posture is when you take one foot out and do the squat, make sure your back is parallel to the floor. You'll watch how we do it. Let's go, five, six, seven, start left, one, that's where you stand, you go bend, make sure your knees do not extend your toes, your back comes almost parallel to the floor, you come up and come back to your original position, did you get that? Let's do it on the other side, step, squat, come up and back. We'll do this four more times, a little more rhythmically. Four, three, let's go together now. Let's go. Out, bend, come up, and center. The other side, out, squat, up, and center. Again, out, squat, come up, Center, keep breathing, out, squat, come up, let's do it one more time, out, squat, make sure your knee does not extend your toe, and back, step, hold it there, make sure your knee does not extend your toe, come up, and back, to make this exercise, into a cardio workout, we do it a little faster. You watch it how. Four, three, two, let's go. One, down, up, center, faster, up, down, up, and center. Again, one, two, three, back. Faster now, let's go. One, two, three, and back. Out, two, three, and back. Again, one, two, three, and back. Out, two, three, and relax. History, architecture, and religion have always been very closely interlinked. We have a short film for you, which uh, very beautifully interlinks all these three. It's the Kar Dameshwar Mahadev Mandir 
It's from the Gupta period at Banaras. Let's take a look. मंदिरों के शहर वाराणसी में यूं तो कई मंदिर हैं, जिनकी ख्याति दूर दूर तक है कुछ ऐसे भी मंदिर हैं, जिनकी ख्याति बहुत ज्यादा नहीं है लेकिन उनकी एक अलग पहचान है उनका एक अलग महत्व है ऐसे ही मंदिरों में शुमार है कंदवा गांव में स्थित करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर वाराणसी की प्रसिद्ध और पवित्रतम पंचक्रोशी परिक्रमा मार्ग पर स्थित है ये प्राचीन मंदिर करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर पुरातात्विक महत्व का धरोहर है जिसे सरकार द्वारा संरक्षित धरोहरों की सूची में रखा गया है करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर स्थापत्य कला का एक बेहतरीन उदाहरण है मंदिर का स्थापत्य छठी सातवीं सदी से लेकर तेरहवीं सदी तक के क्रमिक विकास की कहानी कहता है पत्थर पर नक्काशी कर बनाए गए चित्र जीवंत लगते हैं स्थापत्य कला में ऐसे चित्र बनाने की परंपरा छठी सातवीं सदी में मिलती है इसलिए ये माना जाता है कि मंदिर निर्माण छठी सातवीं सदी में ही शुरू हुआ मंदिर की बाहरी दीवारों पर बने चित्र भारतीय मूर्ति कला की गौरव गाथा का बखान करते हैं करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर के ऊपरी भागों का निर्माण बारहवीं तेरहवीं सदी का माना जाता है क्योंकि ऊपरी हिस्सों की स्थापत्य शैली गढ़वाल शासकों के जमाने की है करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर की स्थापत्य कला में गढ़वाल शैली की छाप स्पष्ट रूप से दिखलाई पड़ती है इस तरह करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर की स्थापत्य कला कई कालखंड की कला शैली का एक अद्भुत संग्रहालय सा प्रतीत होता है आज करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर पुरातत्व विभाग के संरक्षण में है वक्त के थपेड़ों के सामने जहां पवित्र कुंड क्षतिग्रस्त हो गया वहीं मंदिर के पत्थर भी जर्जर हो गए थे पुरातात्विक इमारतों धरोहरों और स्थलों को संरक्षित करने की नीति के तहत कुंड के सुंदरीकरण का कार्य पूरा हो चुका है और मंदिर के जीर्णोद्धार का काम चल रहा है ऐतिहासिक और पुरातात्विक महत्व के करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर के परिसर और बाहर की सड़कों पर बिखरी पसरी गंदगी से मंदिर की भव्यता पर बुरा प्रभाव पड़ता है इसलिए मंदिर परिसर और आसपास की सड़कों को साफ सुथरा रखने की जरूरत है जिससे कि समय के झंझावातों से बच निकलने वाले करदमेश्वर महादेव मंदिर को देखने के लिए पर्यटक और तीर्थयात्री बराबर आते रहे So we had handwriting, we had music, we had thought for the day, we had fitness, and of course, we took you back into the Gupta period. Quite a lot for this program. Thank you for being with us. It was wonderful having you with us on the show also. We welcome your feedback. Do write in to us at aajsavere at ddkdelhi.org.in. Ek baar phir humare saath junne ke liye bhaat bhaat dhanyavad. Agli baar tak. Namaskar.